I am definitely not a commercial fly tire, but there are times when production tying techniques can really speed the process. This video is of tying a size 12 purple chubby Chernobyl and it's shot in real time. In other words, it's exactly as long as it took me to tie the fly. Having all the materials prepped and within easy reach helps tremendously with speed. Little things like using plunger style hackle pliers to get hold of this crystal flash before snipping it off to form a short tail means that the material is ready to go for the next fly and there's virtually no waste. For this fly, a nice big pile of dubbing works better for me than picking up a packet or dispenser and plucking the material from it. The little bit of dubbing added here not only helps with the look of the fly from underneath, it, along with an ample drop of super glue, will really help the rather slippery foam to bind to the otherwise slippery hook shank. I do have a small bit of waste with the polypropylene wings, but the material is fairly cheap, so the speed advantage that I gain by pre-cutting it a little long makes up for the added expense in waste. For speed and consistency, I use the same number of thread wraps to tie down each material. In other words, two for the polypropylene wing and two for the foam dot. Silly legs have gotten rather expensive in recent years, so I hate to waste even a millimeter. I cut everything to its final length during materials prep, although accurately folding them in half and then tying them in at the midpoint of that folded over length can be a little fussy and time consuming. I feel the extra time is worth it in terms of reducing costly material waste. On chubby Chernobyls like this one, the ice dub used for the underbody drives me nuts because you need quite a bit of it to cover the hook shank and it's not the funnest material to dub. I've tried substituting it with other dubbing materials and even chenille, but I keep coming back to the ice dub. I guess it's just a confidence thing. I regularly time myself tying flies, but I think this is the first time I've ever shot a real time video of it. The video has shown me several places where I can trim some time without wasting materials or hurting the integrity of the fly. I like to do the exact same tie down sequence at the front of the fly as I do at the rear. You know, dubbing, then super glue, followed by a few wraps of tying thread. Even still, the foam body often wants to spin on the hook shank. Most chubbies are tied without these little foam dots and a dubbing noodle is used over top of the wing tie down location to both hold the wings down and cover up the bare tying thread. To me, the foam dots are faster, add some float and give the pattern a more dressed up look. Once again, I find myself fiddling with the silly legs to get them folded exactly in half. I have, however, gotten pretty good at nailing the midpoint of the folded over strands. I also found that using the foam dots really helps to get the legs oriented correctly because they want to land right where the two layers of foam meet. No, this is not very relaxing, fun tying, but when you have a few dozen of the same fly to tie, production tying techniques definitely help to speed the process and hopefully leads to greater consistency between individual flies. Being able to complete a speedy and effective whip finish, whether you use your hands or a tool, always helps to keep things moving. Not snipping the loops of the silly legs until the last step helps to stop your thread from catching individual legs as you tie the fly. I do like to leave the front foam a little long just for some added float. Relieving the corners with vertical snips seems to be quicker and more accurate than horizontal ones. This fly took me 4 minutes and 30 seconds to tie, but I've tied them in under 4 minutes without two cameras getting in the way.